Next, I would like to invite uh, the Honorable Member of Parliament, Javar Sarkar, sir. And before that, I, I would like to inform that uh, S. Narayan, who was supposed to be here, was not able to join because he had to uh, go out of town. So instead of him, uh, my fellow coordinate, uh, executive coordinator, Pugal Gandhi, would uh, speak few words later. Uh, so, Javar Sarkar, sir, please, you can speak now. Uh, thank you. Uh, I agree substantially with what Mr. Rajan has said. Uh, it is direct, it is analytical, and it is incisive because it needs to be incisive. Uh, let me also begin by thanking the Dravidian Forum, and perhaps it, it may be of interest to you. Uh, even as a student in Calcutta, uh, we were greatly interested, at least some of us were greatly interested in Periyar's writings. I remember purchasing his books from a Tamil English shop in Lake Market at a pretty early age. And I have, uh, I, they were booklets actually, uh, mainly in Tamil, but uh, which I can't read. But many of them started coming out in English, and finally, I got this compiled works. Uh, Periyar, then uh, even uh, other leaders of the Dravidian movement and the other people's movement or the indigenous people's movements of different types have been a great influence on many of us. Dr. Lohia used to write a lot on caste. I think mean, so it's a very commendable effort for you that you have revived that ideological uh, stimulus and we hope uh, to gain from them, from your discussions. Uh, mine has been a bit of a um, checkered one. Uh, I managed to fight with, or every Gary government managed to fight with me or find farm fault. So I was being a bit of a kicked around person. Uh, the net result was that uh, after the first 10 years in the district, uh, I still worked. I got a, another, I mean, my total working life was about 42 years, out of which if you take 10 in probation and district, that left 32 years. It was 16 and 16. 16 in Calcutta in the state secretariat and 16 in Delhi in the ministries. Uh, so I can't be really uh, biased on either side, but where this amendment is concerned, I had no option but to come out pretty sternly, not because I am now an MP with an opposition party, but because I feel very strongly about it, that this was draconian. This was draconian. Our chief minister was the first to shoot off two letters. Um, she uh, shared them uh, with me, and uh, the issues were discussed in a group that understands these matters. The stand that we have taken now, uh, now I'm talking as we means from the point of West Bengal government and the Trinamool Congress, the stand they have taken is very categorical. Our uh, justifications are many. Number one, as I uh, tweeted, I think yesterday or day before, there are 1510 vacancies out of 16, uh, out of 6,700 posts. 1510 vacancies as it stands today. It's almost one fourth. Now you can't fill up 1510 vacancies in the IAS in one year. If you do that, you'll be committing suicide for that batch. So even if you take, say, about 180 to 200 every year and fill in also the residual vacancies that come up, it's an impossible uphill task, which means we have allowed the system to come to such a pass, allowed it to come to such a pass. So if there are 1,510 vacancies, it's a short blanket. Either you pull it over your head and the mosquitoes get to your feet, you pull it to cover your feet and the mosquitoes bite your face off. So that's the situation. And Mr. Modi had seven years of earnestness 
to fill it all up. Of all the prime ministers who have come in recent times, he has had the benefit of hands-on experience in Gujarat. The uh, minister mentioned just before me that he would have objected. Now, I had the uh, opportunity to be additional secretary in the government of India when he was chief minister and uh, also continue also continue as secretary for quite some time after that. So over these seven years, uh, we were witness to his repeated attacks on the center on every issue, on whatever he felt was touching about center-state relations. Now, being products of the state, uh, we had a twinge of sympathy with many of his many of his issues because, after all, one must remember that the government of India is not run only by the All India Services. It is run by those who have never seen in their administrative position anything beyond the Rajpath or the Central Vista or the Boat Club of Delhi. So there's a degree of myopia in the government of India also. And much of the uh, hubris stems from myopia. So when Mr. Modi spoke about center state relations in favor of the state, uh, one was quite sympathetic to him. So there's no question of Mr. Modi getting annoyed throughout his period of chief ministership, which I believe was almost four, almost uh, 14 years, he was a constant votary of state powers. He would not even have allowed such an order to pass. Number two, fact number two. So it's quite tragic that he is today being the proponent. He is today proposing, proposing something that is intrinsically harmful to the states. And willingly, he's, he's leading the charge, so to say. What a, uh, what a turnaround of roles. Incidentally, when we talk of chief ministers not sending enough names to the center or not releasing officers from the states to the center, which is also a fact, which is also a fact and happens in all states, some states it's a bit more. Let me give you the all-time record in holding back officers and not allowing them to work in the government of India is held by Mr. Narendra Modi. Please check my take your facts with what I'm saying. And you will find that the maximum number of obstructions to central deputation were created by Mr. Narendra Modi during his tenure. I have not taken a measuring tape and measured it, but what I'm saying would generally hold good. He's, he's certainly one who would not allow his officers to go to the center. A rule like this with a lot of force attached would be very relevant in his case. But let us not get trapped there. Let us move on. So I have mentioned two things. Number one, that there is an overall shortage of officers that you can't fill up by wishful thinking or by pulling the short blanket towards yourself like a selfish kid. You can't do that. You have to share it. And number two, that in center state relations, Mr. Modi, as chief minister, was uh, very, very vociferous. Very, very vociferous and utterly selfish, if I may use that term, as a, as a retired old man. He was an utterly selfish person. So he has no moral ground to give coaching classes to others about what to do. Apart from that, Apart from that, there are many other issues involved. And one of it is the ulterior motive. If you want a larger number of deputations to go from the, set center, uh, from the states to the center, sit with the states. Don't force them. Sit with the states and say, okay, from next year, we send 10% higher number of deputations. The year after that, we send 8% higher than what we sent last year and work out a system. So the states are also mentally prepared. Give a promise on how you will fill up the vacant posts. You have to come up with a working plan on how you fill up the working posts. Do not resort to terrorism. Administrative terrorism is what he is resorting to now in no uncertain terms and will not work. The two many chief ministers have come out with it and 
even if he desires to push through his plan, like he did with the farmer's bill, he will come across the same fate. India is still a working democracy, albeit fractured, albeit threatened, albeit under different stresses. But India is still a federal working democracy. And the response would be, as has happened with the Farmers' Bill, Farmers' Acts, as has happened with the cold freeze on the citizenship bills. So don't, don't threaten people around a federation is a partnership of equals. It's almost like a marriage. I mean, for want of a better, better expression, it is you have to you have to behave as you are behaving with an equal partner. This is not a patriarchal marriage. But then, uh, what do I say? Only by way of an example, not anything specific on any person. Some people don't know how to treat their wives. Let's put it that way. To so move on, this calls for negotiation. This calls for a sustained opposition by all intelligent states. Of course, a bit of a discussion could be held, but not at gunpoint. Not at gunpoint. Most states have And one state, I believe, is supporting him. I mean, so we leave it at that. The question is, these are the... It calls for a long-term remedial action, which could have been done by a prime minister if he so, did, so wanted in the last seven years. After all, he knew the problem from the point of uh, view as a chief minister, having suffered the shortage. Number three, that deputations to the center entail a lot of issues. I, I'll give one point only. Supposing you want 40% of names, I send you 40%. And 20% or 20, half of, of people who are not empaneled at the different rates of government of India. Or do you want only empaneled officers at the level of Joint Secretary, Additional Secretary and Secretary. In which case, you will be taking away the cream de la cream from the states. Empanelment and selectivity at each level. So will you take 40% of only those who are empaneled? Which means that of the so-called listed officers, you'd be taking 80%. You'll be taking 80% of all those screened out officers. Now, whatever be the value of screening and others, we'll not get into that. There's a bit of subjectivity. Um, so, having said that, it is a valid list that the Supreme Court has also accepted. So, selected officers, if you ask for 40% of the entire state cadre, you'd be actually asking for 80% of the listed officers, selected officers. You understand? So you'll be leaving the states lame. Lame. So you can't function like this. So there's no question of even uh, compromise on this issue. And I've felt out the issues that this just cannot be allowed to pass. It's like demonetization. It's like uh, that farm bills. It's like uh, the Citizenship Act. It's, it's not governance. It's vendetta. Thank you very much. So thank you. Uh, thank you so much for your refreshing uh, speech.